Well, welcome to Sand Hill Orchards. We're trying the new Scratter and Apple Cider Press today. Uh, we had some mild weather in, in December, so uh, we didn't know if we were going to get to this this year, but we're going to try it and see how it works. Uh, let me explain what we have here. Over here is a Harbor Freight 20-ton uh, manual press. This is a 20-ton jack here, so this gives us our pressing ability. We need a, a rod in there to pump it. And here is our our cheese boards, which are uh, HDPE, I think it's called plastic. We got the wood frame. We're gonna make, build our cheeses up here and slide them to the press. We had this. 22 by 88 inch long stainless steel pan built for us by a local uh, steel manufacturer or ma fabricator and we have two two by four tables on the side to hold it up. We took the frame, the Harbor Freight frame, and we mounted it on a half inch piece of plywood and some large like five inch wheels, heavy duty wheels, so we can move this thing around. The tables aren't bolted to anything. They're just sitting there holding up the, the pan. So that's the press. We have it long enough so that we can build a, a cheese here, slide it into the press. As someone's pressing, we can be building another cheese. When that gets pressed, it slides to the end. Somebody takes it apart and moves the components back here to build the next cheese. Today we'll probably just be doing it one at a time because we're just trying to figure out how it all works. This uh, beast over here is called the Apple Scratter, and we're going to, I guess we turn it on, guys. Well, we anticipated the first problem, and that is that the belt, we need an idler arm here, or a tensioner, to, uh, so what we're going to try and do is put a screw here, through here, through like a bottle cap, um, just to get this a little bit tighter, because it's, it's loosened up, and it starts slipping. But, what we have here is, we have... The apples go in the top here. They flow forward till they hit the grinder, which is a uh, an oak uh, cylinder with stainless steel screws in it. And uh, if the belt were tighter, we would it would be grinding right now. So that's the scratter, and then it comes down and makes it in the pulp, and the pulp goes into the the box here so I can see there's your scratter with the screws on it so all the slaw is, slaw is all gonna hit this this tote in the bottom here so it's not working perfectly yet we need to get a tensioner bar on here spring loaded so we got a makeshift uh, little screw sticking in there right now the, uh, the small pulley was spinning on the gear. We might have to cut some grooves in the motor shaft so that uh, the hex nuts will, will tighten down that uh, onto that shaft better. Um, the pulley is probably too large here. If we go to a smaller pulley, that's like a 12 or 14 inch radius. We probably want to go down to about a six and double the speed. Apples 
are kind of difficult to get to go down. More speed would help. Next year we'll have some improvements on it. <laughs> it's not splattering up. It is a little bit. Yeah, that shows us though that we're not going too fast. We need to speed that up. Yeah, we had the uh, pulley sliding on the. There we go. We had the pulley sliding on the shaft for a while, so we might have to cut some grooves in the in the shaft so that these set screws will uh, will take hold better. Most of the slaw went straight down. Let's make a cheese. Let's make a cheese. Oh yeah. So there's our slaw. Let's get a bushel. Of... Where do you want this? I want it right here, I guess. Or just set it down right there. That's what we got the big scoop, scoop for. Okay. Uh, I'll let you get the scoop. Where's the scoop at? You get the scoop. I'll uh, I'll take a video of you. See, we need a bigger scoop. <laughs> you think that's fine enough? It'll uh, be a little finer if we put more screws and do it faster. Yeah, that's not, that's that's not as fine as I've seen. More? Yeah, more. I would say you'd be counting these scoops. Yeah, this is five. Okay. How full do you want it? I don't know. Six. You think that's good? I mean, we could fill it right up, but maybe thinner is better. We'll put eight, eight, let's put eight scoops in. Okay, just sort of flatten it out. Wrap the edges up. Let's go this way. All the way. Get both layers. Make sure you get both layers. All the way across. And all the way across the other way. And then toward each other. And then if you can lift that wood frame back out. Put another piece of plastic on. Yep. We got one piece of plastic on the bottom. There you go. This one will go easier. Actually, it's supposed to fit just inside of that board. So I think we're going to make the we're going to make that board about two inches. Don't no, Sam. It's supposed to sit on that. No, 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 no. Stop, Dale. You have to put the fabric. Rookie. <laughs> And Sam, that board, that frame is supposed to sit on top of the board. Okay. So obviously we need a, too big. a smaller frame. It should probably be about, let's see, that's 22 by 20. So we need this thing to be inside about 20. Spread it out. Nope, 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 nope. Sam, it's double thick. Double thick. I, I can't, I'm holding the camera. I can't do it. You guys, you, ever, you guys ever fold a bed sheet? I don't know which way it's supposed to be. Tell where the, the corner is. Yes. It's the long way, folks. I think Sam's got my corner. There's your problem. We figured that this netting or this nylon that we bought was kind of kind of weak, so we we're doubling it up. So instead of making a square about 60 by 60 inches, we made it 60 by 120. It might, we might only need one thickness. Pick up that frame, Sam. Pick, yep, it's got to be on top of the board. We might have to set it a little crooked.
We had a whole apple in there at one point. Yep, another board on top. Set it sideways. Yeah, we gotta make that thing there smaller. Or, or at least put a couple of stoppers yeah, we, there. How about I put a screw in there? Uh, no, because then the screw would catch in the netting. We're just gonna have to make it smaller. 20 by 20. This is 20 by 20, I think. See, because these things are going to be squishing out too far because we've got the board too big. So we need to make the, the frame smaller so when it settles, it can squish out a little bit. Here we go. So we squeezed four gallons just for our very first squeeze to get the kinks out of the system. Oh, Tom, did you try it? Not yet. We're going to get a, uh... We're going to get a first impression on camera. Yeah, first impression on... Look how, that is really dark cider. No. That stuff is sweet. I'm not normally an expressive person. Okay. So we'll see how this works out. Four gallons, I'm like... What? We got working. Does it taste like cider? It, yeah, it tastes like apple cider. It's smooth. It's not bitter at all. There's no grit. There's no. This doesn't grab you by the throat like some of that store bought stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that. What is that? That sterile taste yeah. that you get in the store. Right. Because it hasn't hasn't been pasteurized. we need we need a twenty inch stroke. It's definitely cider though. It's not just apple juice. Right. Yeah. It's raw cider. 